Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm here with Paul Muller on the Perkins stand. He's a power expert and my goodness, we've got a first here for Perkins globally. We've got electric power yep. on the stand here. Big one and a small one. Paul, we're known for engines at Perkins. Um, What's going on with electric power? No, so Perkins, we're power systems experts. So right. we're supporting our customers through the energy transition and that includes having battery systems and uh, helping them get electric electrifying their machines and electrifying their products. So we're pleased to announce at Bauma that we've brought our batteries along. So there's a big one here. This is the 300 volt battery. Where typically would this go into for the industry, for plant and equipment? So the 300 volt battery would go into larger machines, you know, larger excavators, wheeled loaders, those types of things. You can also use multiple of the batteries if you want to get more energy onto the machine. So right. um, you can join multiple of them together to get more and more storage onto that. So uh, really can power some large machines with this. Of course, yes, but folks, we have smaller machines. Paul, you've got to come over here um, because we've also got smaller machines, folks. And this one, what we see down here, Paul, 48 volt battery. now. A lot of people are talking, obviously, about electric. If you come around here, we can see the front of this battery. And Paul, the, the thing about it is we're starting mini, we're starting compact. Yes. And so I'm taking it, that's why we've got the smaller battery option. Exactly, you know, smaller machines, uh, compact wood loaders, <laughs> small paving machines. You know, that smaller battery is perfect for those types of applications. You know, right sized for what they need and the lower voltage as well, which makes it easier for them to install. Come round the back, folks, because we need to see the back of the battery. It's not very exciting, the back of a battery, but Paul, at the moment, what I want to see it here from is what's inside here. First of all, what's the casing made out of uh, to protect the battery? And then what have we actually got inside? Yeah, so you can see the back of the battery. It's made up of a series of modules, gives us a lot of flexibility to allow different combinations. Okay. Um, so inside that are the, uh, the cells that make up the batteries. You know, we've got a lot of flexibility in the cells we can use, so we can use different styles of cells, uh, prismatic ones or uh, cylindrical cells. Gives us future proof, and allows us to move forward with the, as uh, technology changes. What's interesting about that, folks, this is the first time I've heard about those sort of options, and we'll come into that in a, probably another discussion, Paul. But what is the scenario here? The lithium, lithium ion in here? Yeah, lithium ion. But you've got a solution that if we go to different materials, then you can pack different things in in the future, future-proofing the casing and, and, all, and everything that goes with it. And future-proofing the customer's installation. They yep. do the installation once, we'll make sure that they stay up to date with the latest technology as it comes along. So I've known how you do the 3D uh, models of engines to fit them in machines. I take it you can help people fit these batteries in their machines using your engineering skills as well. Exactly, in the same way, we've got our customer machine engineering team, our CMET team, they're working across our diesel engines as well as into our future technology. So they will work with our customers to install these into their applications. So we'll have a machine side by side doing electric and stage five. Now, I can't come to the stage without seeing some big engines, folks. And let's go and have a look at some of the engines. We'll start a bit smaller, but then we'll get a bit bigger. Right, so turning around, Paul, come and tell me a little bit about you know, the classic new engines, stage five that are coming from Perkins. What yeah. have we got here? So here we've got our 904 uh, product. So this is the, uh, the 2.8 litre. So it's our IOPU configuration. So it's got a cooling pack all in there, the mounting system already built in. So the customer is really simple for them to install. So we brought this along for the show and it's, uh, it's just come out. So this is a sub 55 kilowatts. So no SCR system, but still meets stage five and also dual certified for the US tier four final as well. What's interesting about this is, you know, when we're, we're looking at engines, it's like the manufacturing process of putting things together. If you've got a system where you've got a, a system like this, you can literally plug it in as such yep. and, and, and off you go. Exactly. And I think that helps the manufacturers. And this is what engine design is all about nowadays, isn't it? Helping manufacturers do things quicker. It is. It's about helping the OEM. So our after treatment is already mounted on the back of the engine. There's a cooling pack on the front. So it's plug and play. Uh, you know, all the difficult installation work is already done, all the sign off to make sure it meets the emissions regulations is all done, so the customer has a really simple solution. And these things are tested at minus 35 degrees, folks. I've been in the cold chamber at Perkins, and I can tell you, it's still working when that happens. Yep. And I think it's about the testing, and it's also about saying, right, we've got a whole system packed in here that's optimised everything, yep. and also that means you can make machines smaller, which we're seeing everywhere in Bauma, aren't we? We can, yeah. A number of our engines, we've uh, really downsized them and increased the power density. And one of those engines I'm going to be seeing on the Wacker Newson stand later on, folks. 
come on, time for some big stuff, Paul. Come on, let's have a look. Right, when you look at... This is an engine, folks. Yes. This is not any ordinary engine. This is a Perkins engine, folks. And, and this is a beast, isn't it, Paul? Come yeah. around here to, to talk to me a little bit about the elements in this and, uh, and, and talk to the audience there. Yeah, so here we've got our 1706 engine, so 9.3 litre. Again, stage five, tier four final compliant as well. So single installation uh, for the customer to meet both European and US regulations. Uh, as you can see, we've got the after treatment mounted on the engine again. Yep. It's really simple for the OEM to install because all the work's done, the validation's done, um, and it's just ready to plug into their machine and away they can go. After treatment's so important now, isn't it, it is. with stage five engines? And I think what's really important is, you know, the maintenance of an engine like this and how you use the, uh, the engine because we've got to power up, haven't we, with stage five we to make this work because that's really important for people to understand how to use these engines, isn't it? Yeah, but all the technology's uh, built in. So, you know, there's, there's the systems there to look after the system to keep the thermal management working, keep the after treatment in, in the best condition. You know, the after treatment's designed as a fit for life. There's no... Uh, servicing needed on that um, and so that's the whole point isn't it yeah. you know what for me what I see here stage five engine is every drop counts folks the value of every drop we're, we're actually using it and optimizing all of that as we work through so there's lots of sensors in here isn't there there's lots of hidden stuff there's, behind this shiny engine yeah, isn't huge amounts of sensors huge amounts of data being collected off that and you know we also can use our telematic systems to monitor the engines and help our customers get the most out of them yeah, and what's really interesting about the monitoring of the health of an engine, that the engine fundamentally is the beating heart of any machine, it you is. know, and the operator is the brains, folks. So if we have alerts that are coming through because sensors are telling us something's getting too hot, too warm, we can see any trending data that might happen, or we can have a red alert, which really says, folks, red alert, let's make sure this machine is switched off, we get a maintenance engineer into the machine, and off we go, can't we? Exactly, and we're using our telematic systems to give uh, the users you know, actionable information, not yep. just here's a number to go and look up. We actually go and tell them what to do and how to fix the issue them, uh, for themselves. And what's interesting for me, folks, I've had a lot of conversation about sustainability here at Bauma, but also about CO2 emissions. And the main tier one contractors, again, in Balfour BT in the UK, they want that data. That data is coming from your sensors, from your systems. They're enabling other people's systems to put that out from the canvas straight into data and dashboards. And it really is an opportunity to say, this is the difference a stage five engine from Perkins can make, isn't it? It is. And also, our engines are compatible with the uh, low carbon intensity fuels that are coming out as well, which can help even more reduce down their carbon uh, impact. So the engines are all HBO compliant, you know, you can run on other uh, low carbon fuels and also, you know, up to 20% biofuel as well and still meeting stage five requirements at that point. So, folks, Perkins is no longer Perkins engines in my mind. It's Perkins power now, Paul. Yep. We have battery power, we have engines, we have everything in there. So it's Perkins engines, but they're putting the P in power now with all the battery stuff. But we still love a good stage five like this one because we need these to go out there and really do the grunt work in the industry, don't we? We do, and it's helping people work through the transition. So we've got the engines today, they're cleaner than they've ever been. We can run on the low carbon intensity fuels and then we're working with uh, the OEMs on fitting the batteries and moving towards electrification as well. It all makes the manufacturing process simple. One line, put a battery in it, put an engine in it. Depends what you want, depends what the customer wants. Now you've got the power that matters. It does and you know, customers can come to us and we can help them look at the different solutions and work out what's best for them. You know, as I mentioned about our uh, customer machine engineering team, you know, we can sit down, we can give them the options, we can say what would work, what's the best solution for them. We also had the hybrid systems that we showed back in Baumer in 2019. We've continued to work on those as well. So we have that full range and we can really help the customers work on what's the best solution for them. And I'm going to be speaking to some of those customers soon. Paul, thanks very much. No problem. Great Thank to see some extra power in Perkins. Cheers. Yeah,